You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America. Great to have you with us on the program today. The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War, is the true story of a young man having to deal with a war, a war that no one wanted to talk about. It became The Forgotten War. The author and Korea War veteran is John Viola, a first-time writer. It's a story he felt he had to tell. It's funny, sad, heartbreaking, and entertaining. The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War. The new book, author John Viola, with us on This Week in America. John, welcome to the program, an important book. Thank you for being with us on the show today. I'm honored to be on it. (laughs) Well, this is a war that we really, as I'm reading the book, I, I realize I don't know that much about. And let's go back how this whole book came about. You started doing uh, some daily exercising with your wife, and the two of you were talking, and you would tell stories from back in the Korean War, and you decided, you know, I really need to go back and put this book together and, and let people know what happened during that period. That was my wife's decision. So she liked your story, and it's like, you need to put a book together and tell this story. As a, my wife is a, an avid reader, and she gets all of the new books that come out and certain authors, and she's done that for years and years. So I value her opinion. So every time I finish a page, I would give it to her and let her read it. She's read my book about seven times, and I saw a bookmarker in it, and I think she's doing it again. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you pick up a little something different each time you go back and you read the book. The book is called The Second Truth. The author, John Viola, our guest on the program. The book's available at Amazon, all the usual places. You can link on directly to our website and and get information on John's book. Let's talk about the Korean War. I was shocked and almost had to read two times when you had the, the casualty list there. Talk about the casualties in the war and a whole number of, of, of soldiers that are that are still considered missing in action. The Korean War, we had about 54,000 people killed. In Vietnam, as a comparison, they had 58,000. And uh, also they had 2,000 missing. The Korean War has 8,000 missing. And uh, that's quite a bit of difference. It only took three years to do that in Korea, and it took 10 years to kill that many in Vietnam. And this, I often see on uh, television and, and even radio sometimes they'll talk about the wars that go to World War II and jump right over to Vietnam. <laughs> so they skip us. Well, yeah, and this is really, when you go back in that time and you do in the book The Second Truth, we really were suffering from war, of it, war fatigue at the time, weren't we? We really, we finished World War II. We didn't want to worry about it, possibly World War III. We, we wanted to block it from our minds. Everyone was tired of war. They just wanted to get on with their lives. You can't really blame them. And uh, looked down upon, and especially by the, the veterans of World War II. They were the worst ones that looked down on us. <laughs> now, that is interesting. Why do you think that was? Well, for one thing, they, they were in a battle on the Germans and all this thing, so they went through a lot. I've not taken any of that away from them. But uh, they looked down on us because they... Our government played it down. There's a big reason right there. They called it a conflict, a police action. But to us, it was a war, no doubt about it. I was in a division of four destroyers. Our flagship was hit in Wonsan Harbor by a large mortar, and uh, another sister ship, uh, sister ship was hit two separate times by gunfire from the shore batteries. Most of the time, we were out there protecting the big ships like the carriers and cruisers. Right. And that was with the Task Force 77 in the Sea of Japan. And uh, the Japan, Japanese, the Japan, Sea of Japan was, uh, yeah, uh, the other one's what? The Yellow Sea had Task Force 95, mostly British, but we operated with them too. And uh, that was, uh, I lost my train of thought. Well, yeah, that was a difficult time. You, you were in the Navy as a lab technician. Talk about that. And you were really... At the forefront, you would see bodies, and you would see w- the wounded soldiers. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how I difficult think... was that when you're looking at a victim of, victims of war? Well, when I uh, wrote some of those stories about that, I gave, like I say, I would read it to my wife. Some of those things I couldn't read out loud. My, my voice would just choke up. I couldn't do it. Still today, I still can't read some of those stories. That, yes. In the book this we're talking... It could have been 
twice as long, you know, or twice as many pages as it is. But there's no filler in it at all. It's just uh, one thing right after another, and it's very interesting, I thought, and historic. And again, it's some of it's sad, heartbreaking, but still a lot of funny things happen, too. Yes, and you'll find it in the book, The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War. John Viola, the author, is our guest on the program. It is a true story. It's difficult for you, obviously, to, to talk about a lot of these stories. As you were going back, remembering them, putting on paper, and writing the book, what did it do for you? Did it, was it helpful to you in, in, in trying to reconcile these years in your life? I, I think it was a closure. In World War uh, Two. Or rather, one, they called it uh, battle fatigue. No, shell-shocked. In uh, the, the World War II, they called it uh, battle fatigue. They didn't have a word for it in Korea. And, that, and ever since uh, then, it's what, PST, post-traumatic stress. Yes. We had it. We just didn't know it. And, and for years, we just put it out of our mind. We didn't think about the war, and we don't talk about it. And uh, I was in a hardware store at one time, and... There was a man wearing an apron. He obviously worked for the store, and he had a hat on that was a Vietnam vet's hat. And I was wearing a Korean War hat, that hat. He saw my hat, and he said, Welcome home. I, I, it almost brought me to tears. I didn't realize that, I, that uh, how much that war affected me until I wrote that book. Yeah, the book is The Second Truth. It's, it's, a, it's an excellent read. It's a war that, uh, well, it, it is forgotten. And, and tell the story of how you came up with that title, The Second Truth. Well, uh, we left uh, when I was transferred over. I was actually reassigned to a, a destroyer in the Pacific somewhere, so I had to get transportation on a troop ship. And this troop ship was loaded with Marines. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them. So as we left, we passed by Alcatraz, and then all these guys were shouting, hollering, having a good time. There was a lot of noise going on, and everybody was up on the deck. Then we started approaching the Golden Gate Bridge. I was kind of surprised because it's orange. I thought, sure, it'd be gold, but it wasn't. It was orange. And they were still cheering and hollering. We went under it. They're still at it. And then one guy said, they can't send me to Korea, and everybody left, you know, this sort of thing going on. Then as the Golden Gate Bridge started getting, slow, you know, slow, smaller, and then it got quiet, uh, unbelievably quiet. You could even hear the throbbing of the engines on this big ship. That's how quiet it was. I think we're all thinking the same thing. This might be a one-way trip. But then when I got to Japan... I ended up at a receiving station. I had to wait for transportation to my ship. And uh, that was a good time there. It was a beautiful place there. Then my ship finally came in the harbor, and I had to catch a boat to get out there. And I, it was tied up. By, there was four ships of the division, and they were tied up to a, a destroyer tender, a repair ship. Right. And then uh, I went up this high ladder, you know, <laughs> And I'm afraid of heights. Boy, I had to force myself to do that one. <laughs> then a sentry met me at the deck and he took me through the ship and down, you know, down the, the passageway on the outside. And I'm looking down at the destroyers. The first time I've ever seen one. And then uh, the one closest to the ship, I saw a lot of sparks flying around, a lot of noise going on. And as I got closer, I saw it was hit by a big <laughs> shell. And it was right in front of the after smokestack where there was two dummy loading machines, and they were gone, and there was a hole there. And that ship was just loaded with, with shrapnel, holes everywhere. The back of my neck, the hair stood up. And then I realized what the Chinese proverb from the monks said about the second truth. You know something, but you don't really know it until you experience it. That's where I experienced it. I realized then that I'm going to go where he came from, and it's a good chance I'm not coming back. Well, and so and many of your, of your friends didn't. I, you, you talk in the book, The Second Truth, I think there were 28 in your, in your class, and what, 14 were either killed or, or wounded. So a lot of people, and you were on ships where people you knew lost their lives. Yes, yes, yes. We were heading for a... We were with a task force 95 with the British when we had uh, orders to uh, 
hot shot it down to the, then it was uh, called Formosa. Today it's Taiwan, I believe. And uh, there's a strait there between China and uh, Taiwan. You know, as Taiwan's a large island, you know. And that's where the nationalist free Chinese were with General Chiang Kai-shek. And, of course, China was communist. And we had, we went down there because the Chinese were uh, building up a lot of troops on their side, and the nationalist Chinese were doing the same thing, and they were preparing to attack one another. We had to go down there to, in the middle, to stop that, and we did. But we had to go there at flank speed, which means very fast. And on the destroyer, that means you know you got to be careful <laughs> and bad weather. But the weather was fairly decent. There were some swells out there, but not that bad. And uh, on a day like that where you get some swells, you get a little bit of spray every time the ship goes up and down, or there's some spray comes back. So we used to take all of the clothes to down the shorts, go in front of the Mount One gun out front and catch the spray. And this was what was happening. And uh, I was going to do the same thing later, but I wanted to write a letter, you know. And uh, so I was down in the mess hall when we... We felt like we hit something. We were going very fast. For the for conditions, we normally wouldn't be going that fast. And we hit something just like put the brakes on. And then uh, the alarm went off. That said, man overboard. My station was in the, the whale boat. So I, I, was, I was facing the back of the ship. I had to go up this metal ladder with a chain railings on it. And then they stopped the ship. They put it in reverse. <laughs> and I could hardly hang on. So I got up on the deck, and I'm running down there, and I see men in the water. And, uh, you know, a big guy, a friend of mine, he's Mooney, his name was, he was saying, save me, somebody save me, you know. Wow. I never made it to the well, because by the time I got to my sick bay, they were starting to bring him in. And then when he came in, he was in shock. I laid him down on the deck, you know, on a blanket. And I'm, my, my sick bay is located right over the boiler room, and it's hot. Oh, <laughs> and yes. As he got that, he came out of shock pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, uh, you talk well, about... Long story short, they had a muster. Uh, two men were missing. Oh. One we never found. He was a good friend of mine. Oh, that was John? But, yeah. Yeah, and you talk about him because you were what just with him shortly before all of this happened, and what he had just cut his his red beard off, and you didn't recognize him at first because he looked different. You're just with him. I shaved it. He just shaved it off. Yeah, and, and I it, was teasing him. You know, <laughs> I just came out of supper, and he was up on the deck, and I was, you know, I was teasing about him. You know, he looked like a kid. I, I've never seen him like that. Then he told me he was going to go up forward, don't catch a spray, and I said I would beat him up there later after I write a letter. And uh, he was, we never found him. He was. The Second Truth is the name of the book, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War. John Viola is our guest on the program, the author. It is a, uh, it's a true story. There is a, a story in the book that you talk about, your home on, uh, on leave, about to go back for another tour in, um, in Korea. Uh, you're out in a double date, you're driving, and, and you're stopped by police. And this sort of brought home to you that, okay, we're not in a war, and nobody particularly cares that we're over there fighting. Talk about that story and being stopped by police and, and, and what happened. Well, I was on a uh, double date with a friend of mine, and uh, we just came back in town. And it was, of course, late in the evening, and somebody was running around town, you know, with a car causing trouble, and they have to have a car like I was driving. And uh, the cops stopped me, and I showed them my license. The last time I was home, they, the motor vehicle department gave me a little sticker thing, there, not a sticker, another card, stapled it to my driver's license. It was good for the present war. It's actually a leftover from World War II, so I didn't have to have a license, you know. Right. And so I showed him that. He looked at it. He was a little puzzled. So he called it in. And they went back and forth on the radio a while. And then he decided to let me go. So they let me go. A short time later, he stopped me again and told me he had to give me a ticket because there was no war. <laughs> no war. Amazing. I just came from one. And I had to go back. And you were, you were there caring for wounded and seeing soldiers die, and they're telling you that, that it's not a war. As I'm reading, no. I, I can barely recall this in history, but in, in the conflict between General MacArthur and uh, 
and, and the president. Uh, talk about that and maybe sort of a what if. What if MacArthur would have been able to fight this as a war? I wish he did. They should have let him. Our generals were good then. If we let MacArthur do what he wanted to do, we probably would have had a free China over there, and they probably would have been an ally. But instead, MacArthur had the land in Inchon. They had to get permission from the president, you know, all the time for anything. And uh, MacArthur, uh, 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 well, he was talking with President Truman, and President Truman asked him if he thought the Chinese would get into the war. MacArthur told him that the Chinese have a 300,000 man armor, army, and they could only put about maybe 50,000 troops, you know, in Korea. And we had 70,000 over there at the time. And he says, our troops would just decimate them. So he gave them permission to uh, land at uh, Incheon, which is not too far from China, across the Yalu River there. And uh, what happened was uh, they made the landing, and uh, we had 7,000 Marines in the Chosen Reservoir at the time that was close to it. And the Chinese came across that river with 250,000 soldiers against 70,000 Marines, no, 70,000 soldiers, and 7,000 7, were in the Chosen Reservoir. And they had to fight their way out of there, surrounded by the Chinese, on the high ground on both sides, and they're shooting down on them on a road, only one road out of there. And God bless them, those Marines said they weren't retreating, they were just attacking in another direction. Wow. You've got to be proud of those guys. They yeah. You have to be proud of them. And that's a story, many stories in the book that really needs to be told. The book is called The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War. John Viola with us. John, a couple minutes left in the program. You belong, I know, to a Korean War veterans group. What's the attitude of the others, and what do they feel about the book? Because here's somebody that's actually calling attention to uh, a very important part in, in their lives, and certainly an important part of U.S. history, even though we don't know that much about it. The people who get contact to me you know, on reviews about the, that read the book, they tell me it should be a movie. And uh, yes. I think I agree with them. It should be a movie. Yeah, I can see Tom Hanks in this. I think this would make a... Uh, That's what I think. I, I, think, I even sent him a, a letter <laughs> Interesting. Uh, talking about that. It just, uh, that, book, it, that book is actually in Hollywood in two different places where producers go to pick out movies you know, that they want to do. It's actually there. Well, it's time that we focus on the uh, the Korean War. And once again, 54,000 casualties, 8,000 still missing as you're reading it. And you uh, certainly touch on it a little bit in history, but you sort of pass over it. It's only a few years after World War II, and everybody just wanted to move on with their lives and not focus on that. John, it's an excellent book. Once again, it's called The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950 to 1953, The Forgotten War. It's available on uh, Amazon, all the usual places where you find books. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to, uh, to John's book and get information on it. John, thank you so much, first of all, for telling the story. It's a very important story that needs to be told. And thank you for being with us on the program. And thank you for having me, Vic. You're welcome. Once again, the book, The Second Truth, Korean War, 1950-1953, The Forgotten War. The author has been our guest in the program, John Viola. We're back after these messages. Don't go away.